Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Steph and I am an ordinary plant girl. Um, today I wanted to talk to you about pests. One pest in particular, for me anyway, I've been calling it uh, Thripscape 2020, like the year could get any better than it already has. Um, but I have several plants that have been attacked by these little critters. Um, I still have the thrips problem. Um, we'll go into that a little bit as well. So, what, so back at the beginning of the year, uh, I went and I picked up a, an, a regular green oxalis. Um, and they used to have it hanging in my bedroom window where it could get, you know, enough light. I have a purple oxalis as well that sits in that window. It's a west facing window and they really seem to like it. So I put them there. So I have a west facing window that I would hang um, the oxalis in. And uh, some of my, as I started to get more involved in um, uncommon plants, I would put them in my room so that I could, you know, watch them and, and stuff before I decided where I was going to put them. Anyway, so I got this green oxalis. It was full, it was lush, it was beautiful. And I was laying in bed one day and I'm looking up at it and the leaves look kind of weird. Now, up until this point, I had never even seen a thrip. Spider mites I dealt with, mealybugs I dealt with. Um, I have never dealt with scale uh, thrips. I mean, fungus gnats, yes. White flies, no, never had them. Anyway, knock on wood. Uh, so I'm looking up at it and I noticed that the leaves looked kind of funny. So I kind of got close up to it and uh, I'll put a picture on the screen of what they look like, but I saw these little slender black things crawling all over the leaves. So I immediately freak out, take the plant, wash it off, um, Google, Google heavily. Turns out it's thrips. Cue my panic. So I start looking at the plants that are underneath and next thing you know I've got 10 plants outside I'm treating them all uh, all I had at the time that I found this was rubbing alcohol and water um, with a little bit of dish soap that's what I was using to kill them off and that worked at first but I didn't realize how they worked so later on, about a month later, I thought I had caught it all. And I mean, the plants were quarantined, thought I caught it all. And I started seeing them on other plants. Well, cue the freak out again. So I just went out and I got insecticide. Um, and I don't have it here with me. Hang on. Okay, so I went and got it and I use Safer's insecticidal soap. Um, it kills many different things, um, aphids, which I actually have not had a problem with, uh, da -da 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 -da. aphids, mealybugs, spider mites, white fly, soft brown scale, uh, silids, rose or pear slugs, soft fly larvae, earwigs on houseplants, roses, flowers, vegetables, fruits, ornamental shrubs, trees, and greenhouse planting. The one thing it does not say is that it kills thrips. Now, I have used it. It has killed them. That being said, I decided I was going to go for a more um, preventative measure. So I got the neem oil. I got the spray bowl. Got it all story with neem oil. Um, so during this process, about every week or so, I was hosing the plants down and yes, I know changing the soil probably would have been a good idea. At the time though, I did not, I, I couldn't change the soil for all of my plants that needed it. 
So I figured that I had to figure out how to at least manage this with what I had. And there's another mixture um, that I use as well. Not in the same way, but I still use it. So anyway, I will insert pictures of what these plants look like before and what they look like now. I can say that so far I have not completely lost a plant to thrips. But since about March, I am still fighting them. And I'm actually kind of scared to have them in this room right now. But I have learned to, to deal with them um, in a way that hopefully I can get rid of them. So this is what the oxalis looks like now. Um, I cut all the leaves off. I insecticidal soaked it. I alcoholed it. There's lots of um, dead stuff in here that I do need to remove. And so far, because this one now lives outside um, and it will continue to live outside until I deem it safe to be brought inside because this was what started it all. It was infested. Uh, if you look at my Instagram and you trail back a little bit, you will see pictures of all the plants that I had, oh, there's one over here too. all the plants that I had that uh, I was treating for thrips. So that was the green oxalis. Um, I have had a, this one here, my lipstick plant, which I actually saved from a dollar store. Um, it was just, it's got a lot of webbing on it, but that's just from um, the spiders because this one also lives outside now. Uh, I'm actually surprised it's still alive in any way, shape, or form. No, there's a dead leaf. Um, because I'm not really a fan of lipstick plants. I I bought this one, you know, I wanted to save it and give it away. I don't even know if that's possible now. I might have, I might just, maybe I'll just cut the rest of it and pr oh hey, look at that. There's, you can't see it, you can't see it, but there is, there, I don't know if you can tell, there is a little bit of new growth happening. Oh, there we go. It's not focusing, it's not focusing, it's not focusing. We don't care. Anyway, this was also, um, you know, one of the many that got it. And it's funny because I kind of didn't care. That's why I put it outside. I, but I can't bring myself to just let it die. Like, even though it's out there, I still go out there and water it barely uh, and stuff and kind of just, I'm still treating it and just whatever happens, happens. But I think that now that I've thought about it, that that's what I'll do. I'm just going to cut it and propagate it and see if it will grow that way. I've had luck. Oh, look, there's the spider that made that web. Um, I have had luck doing that. So Maybe we'll give it a shot. Okay, who's next? Oh. So, the next four. There are so many. Um, the next four that I have really, it really hurts my heart that they have been attacked. And the one I'm about to show you, I have made so many mistakes with this that I'm completely and utterly surprised that it is still alive right now. So the first uncommon to me, uh, philodendron, this, I got it on Christmas Eve of last year. It's my tiger tooth philodendron. Uh, I had such high hopes. I love this plant so much. It was too late. And I don't even know how 
it really got it because it wasn't oh yes it was it was near them um so oh, this is so painful it, it's in such a big pot okay this is what's left of my tiger tooth philodendron. This leaf is new. Sorry, I'm checking. I put it outside. Now this this one has been a constant battle as well. Um, it did have big serrated leaves. I killed it. Um, note to self, do not use insecticidal soap. For that matter, even neem oil, depending on the strength that you're using, on new leaves. The problem with this is that thrips, the larva, eat the new leaves. That is a problem. So, uh, it had started to grow back. You can see here, this one, I this one right here, I, I killed it. Um, it was green a couple of days ago, and it's not now. Yeah. Don't put it on new leaves. Melts them. Uh, something else I did, because, like I said, I didn't change the soil. I should have. Would have been advisable. What I did, though, and as well, instead of giving them a peroxide bath, um, here, right now, due to COVID and everything, do you know how hard it is to find rubbing alcohol or peroxide? I've, it's easier to find peroxide than it is rubbing alcohol for some reason. Uh, but so what I did was I put the peroxide in a spray bottle. Um, it was like two parts water, one part hydrogen per peroxide. And I spray the top of the soil. Um, I spray the top of the soil on a weekly basis, and hopefully that will help with that. Uh, you don't want to get that too close to your new leaves either, which was another mistake I made. Uh, but, you know, I'm, she's, she's fighting. She is fighting so hard to come back. Uh, the, even the oxalis is fighting so hard to come back. But you know, it's what happens. Okay. The love of my life, one of the plants that I have owned the longest uh, out of my current collection. I've had, I've had plants over many years, but uh, you know, things happen and you don't get to take care of all of them forever in some cases. This one though, uh, is one of my favorites. And I'm actually surprised because I pretty much cut every leaf off it except for three or four. And it is my, ooh, you need to be watered, my Syngonium Wenlandii. This was a lush, it, like it was, it was massive. It was my baby. It's still my baby, actually. Uh, I, I love it so much. I cut, I thought I was gonna lose the plant. So I cut as much of, off of it as I possibly could and they're propagating. They can actually probably be planted up. Uh, I did wanna see what would happen once I cut pretty much everything off it. And I mean, look, these, I've got new leaves growing with no damage and what looks like no thrips, which would be absolutely great, but they're sneaky. So 
there's that. Uh, this one. This one I got for my birthday from my roommate. Beautiful, lush, looking for it forever. And it is my lemon lime cordatum. Uh, you know the one thing about this entire thing that made me so happy is that, I should knock on wood for this too, is that this, oh, can you see it? Can you see it? Okay. Oh, oh, I don't want to drop anything. So this leaf, this leaf right here, it's got a little bit of dark green here, but this leaf, I am so absolutely happy. It was my favorite leaf on the plant when I got it, and it has remained undamaged. Uh, some of these leaves have just been sunburnt because I have it now in an east facing window but it has new growth happening and the new growth looks pretty good. Oh, I also forgot to say that I am putting diatomaceous earth also in everything. Uh, I do need to do that again with them. This one's really dry too and needs water constantly. Uh, so yes, this one was a big, lush, full, beautiful thing and it's rips. rips. All right. Okay. So that one, now we have another one that I've had for a long time now. I got it from a lady I used to work with. And this is my my purple oxalis. Like, look at that. Look at those leaves. Right? Gorgeous. Same thing. Full. Lush. This one happened to be underneath this one. Underneath the green one. When uh, this whole thing happened. So... Something I definitely notice about oxaluses, their leaves are super, super sensitive to whatever you're treating them with. Um, the alcohol, the alcohol solution wasn't too bad. Um, I don't know if you can see the underside of that. Okay, this is from the insecticidal soap. Um, it, it doesn't like it does not like insecticidal soap, which is just supposed to be a different array of soaps. Not for the oxalis. It hates them. So, I have to clean you up too. Oh, but look, see? Continuously, continuously growing for me though. For years. This plant has only been dormant once. And that was when I got the rhizomes, uh, they were given to me in wet paper towel and I brought them home and I put them in a pot and the leaves died off and then it took about seven or eight months before it started growing and it was, you know, that one season it had like six leaves and then it would only maintain the six leaves. And then I would start counting when it would start maintaining seven or eight leaves. Oh, okay. Uh, give me one sec, I have to go get this one. Okay. So, I went and got my, what I was hoping to be my pride and joy. At the time, this was the most expensive plant I ever bought. Uh, for $95 and I'll just show you this is my Thai constellation um, this leaf is just up because of the way that it's pointed and it's like it's just trying to reach for the light anyway when I got this plant it came with three leaves but one leaf was broken so I cut it off and had to wait many, many months for it to grow a third leaf. 
again, if you follow me on Instagram, you would see my travels with this being so excited, waiting for the new leaf to open. It was fenestrated. I was so happy because I mean, it's not big, right? I was so happy and it, now here's the thing. That leaf opened, I was so happy, so unbelievably happy that it opened and it was fenestrated and it was beautiful and I knew that it probably wouldn't have a long life. One day I was looking at it, because again, it was in my room. One day I'm looking at it and uh, I noticed browning. Now, not the browning that you would see on the white parts of the leaves. It almost looked like brown veining. But every time I looked at it, I couldn't see anything. So one of the effects of neem oil, because it was treated with neem oil, um, one of the effects of neem oil is that it stunts the reproductive process and it, it prevents them from growing. So a lot of the thrips that I will see now is basically the larva. The problem with this is, is that the adult thrips lay eggs in the leaves of the plant. Um, and then when they hatch, that's what the larva feeds off of, is, is your new leaves and stuff. I also find that when you do have thrips, more often than not, I'm not actually sure with other pests because I haven't really paid attention until now, but um, where the petiole meets the leaf, that's where they tend to be lost. So, the larva eats the leaves. When they're, when they're done their time up there, they fall into the soil. So that explains how my green oxalis um, completely infected the, the plants underneath it. Uh, I'm actually shocked. My Adansonii did have, uh, I think I found one on it but that was easy enough. It's, it's been fine. I'm having other issues with that right now. Totally different story. Anyway, um, they fall into the soil and that's where they turn into the adults. And then the adults, the adults hatch from there and the whole process starts all over again. So because the larvae are white, I wasn't seeing them on the leaves of uh, my Thai constellation or the one leaf, the other two leaves are the original leaves that the plant came with that have not been affected. There's a little bit of yellowing on the outer edge of one leaf, but, but that's it. Uh, so, yeah. So I am looking at the leaf and finally, I don't even know what it was. I think one of them must have been on the, like the green portion of the leaf. I finally saw them. And then it all made sense. So then I treated it again with neem oil. Neem oil solution must have been too strong because the cream part of the leaves, they're the leaf, that one leaf, it just it kind of melted, started to go black. So I left the leaf on as long as possible uh, because I wanted to possibly give it a chance to um, throw out a new leaf. And one of the things I love about Monsteras is that you can leave that top leaf and have the stalk there as long as you have a viable root, you're going to get that baby come out of there. So there is one. It's not ready yet. I'm just praying, 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 praying that I don't lose this plant because it, it is a slow grower and I've heard lots of people have problems with them. For me though, my problems have not actually been with the plant or the growth of the plant. When I got it, a leaf was broken and then there was the thrips on the new leaves and I actually heard that they prefer creamy or white leaves. I don't know why that is. Uh, so the plant has not actually given me any, any real trouble itself. So that's why I'm pulling so hard for her. 
Um, another affected plant, which is not in here, just because I didn't want to drag it in here, is my Philodendron Domesticum. Uh, I actually just had to top cut it because the th last three leaves that the plant had, um, thrips larva in them. So I couldn't do anything about them. Okay guys, I just wanted to, you know, have a quick conversation about my, my Thripscape 2020 that I'm dealing with. Um, I'm so glad that uh, you are here, those of you that have returned, the new subscribers that I have. Um, welcome, thanks for being here. Thanks for commenting. I'm, I actually really, really like, I didn't think I would enjoy replying to comments as much as I do, but I do. Um, if you are not subscribed, please consider doing so. Uh, leave a comment down below if there's anything you'd like to see, anything you want to know more about, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye.